Learn how two vulnerabilities allow any attacker to run any command they want on a Netgear router in this video. Hello world, I'm Zenit, your friendly neighborhood hacker and your host for this episode of CVE Deep Dive. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at yet another command execution vulnerability. This time it's on a router. The Netgear DGND 3700 V2 is a wireless router and modem. It's a bit of an older model as you can gather from the spec. They do not even include Windows 8 or 10 in the system requirement. In fact, it was released in March 2014, if we can believe the official documentation. As such, it has reached end of life. This means that Netgear will not put out a patch for the vulnerabilities that we are about to discuss. The following two vulnerabilities allow an attacker to drop a reverse shell of the router's system, an authentication bypass vulnerability and an arbitrary command execution vulnerability. These vulnerabilities are possible since the used mini HTTPD web server has most of its functionality implemented in the CGI folder written in C. The web authentication on it is very bad by design, which allows any attacker to bypass it entirely. The server first sets an environment variable need of to check if authentication is required. However, there are pages that don't require authentication at all, like the ones shown on the screen here. For example, 401 access denied HTM. After all, it's the error page that gets shown to you if you are not authenticated or authorized to see a site. But to check if the accessed web page is actually one of those, it checks if the request string contains any of the aforementioned web pages. If it is, it sets the need of to false. Now an attacker can abuse this by using an attack called parameter pollution. In short, they just need to add another parameter to the URL with the value of a website that doesn't need authentication. This could look a little like this. Later down the line, the web server creates a session in the slash temp folder. The session file itself is called session file xxx, where xxx is an int. However, this number can be passed to the web server as a URL query with the parameter sp. While reading the session ID, the server returns zero if it doesn't find any file. It then checks if the requested ID is the same as the returned one. So here's why that's bad. If an attacker passes an arbitrary high number via SP and sets the ID equals to zero, the server will think that this is a valid session. Since the need of parameter has already been disabled before, the attacker has now bypassed the authentication entirely. And now the attacker can go on to exploit the next vulnerability. The router offers you a feature to ping other machines. It does this by running the ping command in the background. That's a classic attack vector for this kind of vulnerability. It almost looks straight out of a CTF hacking challenge. This can be abused by appending more commands to it like in the example shown on screen. This allows the attacker to run any arbitrary code they like. However, there is one more security feature that the attacker need to bypass, cores. But they only have to do that if they are attacking over the internet and not locally. Sadly, it's also possible to circumvent that by creating an XSS using the command execution vulnerability from before. Please refer to the image on screen or the advisory on the SSD Secure Disclosure website for more details. So let's see how everything combined can be exploited to run any commands without even being authenticated. First, there are a couple of methods in this exploit. Dump HTTP PWD fetches the password recovery page and gets the admin credential. CMD exec exploits the vulnerable ping command feature we discussed before and spawn telnet d uses the cmd exec method to create a telnet session by abusing the vulnerable ping command. The main method as usual is just a workflow. This time it's used to get a shell. First it parses the arguments passed via the CLI like target, if it should dump the credentials, drop a shell or run an arbitrary command. After that it runs the corresponding methods mentioned above to get a shell, dump the credential or run any other command. As you can see, this is a pretty dangerous vulnerability and it's not gonna get fixed. So my suggestion is to upgrade to a more secure router. If you want to see more in-depth looks at 
other RC vulnerabilities, check out this video over here.